Hello, everybody. Welcome to another appointment with Going Expert. This is Rosella, and today our guest is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Rosella. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you again, indeed, because we <laughs> recently have record together a, a podcast interview, but we are going to go and talking about the podcast just in a few seconds. Um, the reason why I invited Stephanie for this uh, uh, interview today is to talk a little bit about moving to US. Stephanie, in fact, is uh, German by origin, but you also lived for some years in UK and then you moved to US. And today you're going to tell us a little bit about it. But please, Stephanie, the stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I will. Thank you so much for inviting me on this, Rosella. This is this is fun. Normally, I'm the one interviewing <laughs> because I do have a podcast. It's called Transcontinental Overload. And I started this um, in the pandemic. Um, so it's been going for over four years. And um, this kind of was a result of a blog that I had also called Transcontinental Overload, which I started when I first moved to the US mm -hmm. 14 years ago. And as Rosella, as you mentioned, I lived in the UK before that and I was born and grew up in Germany um I always knew that I wanted to move abroad I kind of I felt like I had that in me and I actually have in my family I have people who emigrated and immigrated to the U.S. in fact in the 19th century and then again in the 20th century so there's some long lost okay. relatives in this country and so I kind of I feel like I had that in my blood I didn't leave Germany until I was in my mid-20s so I did um study in Germany I studied languages <laughs> yeah um loved languages always have and uh, and then I wanted to to live abroad obviously you know you, you can't mm -hmm. learn languages without living um in the country and yeah. um I so I decided to go to the UK to pursue a master's degree because in the UK you can do that in a year okay and I thought great I like letters behind my name and um and the plan was to go for a year and then come back to Germany and then you know life happened <laughs> and lo love happened and okay. I stayed in the UK <laughs> yeah um, yeah oh my god we have so many things in common Stephanie every time we talk we found more because yeah, yeah. I moved in my middle <laughs> 20s as well yeah I studied languages as well so mm -hmm. it's yeah love happened and you stay in the country so <laughs> There is yes. uh, there is a lot that we, we really have in common. And this is like the beauty of uh, connecting with um, expats or immigrants mm -hmm. or whatever we want yes. to call us. The, the point is yeah. all the same. But uh, and what it's, happened it's, then? So, so the UK was my kind of, um, I felt really good there. And, um, and then, yes, fell in love and stayed and without really making big plans. But then, you know, we, we got married and then we, we had two children. <laughs> And I felt really settled, but my husband always wanted to go and live abroad as well. He actually mm -hmm. wanted to go to Germany. He said, oh, how about we move back to Germany? And I, I was like, no, I just no. left Germany. I don't want to go back there. And I'm happy here. And um, and then his company had a big contract with uh, an American company. Okay. And they, so he started going there on business. And then he was like, actually... They've said, um, would we consider moving to California? Mm. And mm. I mean, you don't say no to California, right? I don't think so, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so uh, even though I, at the time I was very much like, yeah, I'm definitely, let's do that. But let's go back to England after two years, maybe three. Yeah. But that conversation happened 15 years ago. So we, yes. yeah, we so again, a life. We, <laughs> this life, you know, has different plans, and um, we moved to California in 2010, mm -hmm. and then the two years passed, and then the three years passed, and uh, but then I kind of I got restless again, mm -hmm. and okay. I wanted to go back to Europe. I was like, oh. it was like six years, and I was kind of like, I miss my friends and family, mm -hmm. and um, but yeah, it wasn't kind of the kids were settled like in the American system and I you know I was like well maybe let's try somewhere else and then we moved to Austin Texas okay so still U.S. but in a different still U.S. just different a little bit closer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a completely different it might as well have been a different country yeah it's I can because imagine. I mean the U.S. is huge so this is also like people moving to the U.S. have sometimes it's like people talk about America let's go to America but 
there are so many Americas. Oh and yes, definitely, really, definitely. <laughs> it's like you have really have to have to prepare for that. It's almost like European countries, you know, with different so the language mm. it's kind of the same. I say kind of because there are big differences as well. And so yeah, so we were in Texas and um and now we're actually on the East Coast. So we moved to New Jersey two and a half years ago. So I'm I feel like I've done one tour of the US. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> I'm very close to Europe now. <laughs> so <laughs> the flight to, to Germany is only like seven, eight hour flight. So that's much yeah, better okay. than like 11, 11 12 hours. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah of course, so it that... depends on the point of view, no? Compared to 11, 12 hours, seven hours is closer, definitely. So yes. it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Although okay. it's still, I mean, it's a, it's a big, you know, it's a big journey. But, yeah. it, you know, I feel much closer in a way. And yeah, so I've, I've kind of lived in all these very different parts of the US. Wow. As well as uh, England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and how how do you how do you find the um, life there you know like they were very different uh, among each other this uh, uh, destination that you reach in the US yeah. so which one is the one that uh, felt better for you if <laughs> there is one if you can choose that's the that's the que I always get this question um, and the the truth is you can't I couldn't pick one because they're mm. all very different and they all happened at very different phases in my life as awesome. well. So mm. I think I'm grateful that I, it was California to start with because mm. um, we moved to uh, like Silicon Valley area around the San Francisco, the Bay area, which is an incredibly international environment. So mm. it didn't feel like, you know, had we moved to Texas first, that would have been a completely different experience. But um, California was so international that we were just one international family of many. And the kids, when they started school, there were kids from Finland and from Italy mm -hmm. and from Greece. And it, it was just, um, and the kids, the American kids, the local kids were very used to mm -hmm. you know, newcomers and people speaking different languages at home. And, and so it was, and the teachers too. So there was a very, it was very welcoming and yeah. Um, I want to say very easy. It was an easy landing for us. Yeah, uh, those things are very, very important when you move. Eh? I mean, of course, when you move so far away from yeah. home, probably yeah. even more, you notice how they are relevant even yeah. more. But uh, I guess, yeah. I believe, uh, specifically when you move uh, with kids, having an environment that is used to have other kids that are from abroad, mm -hmm. speaking different languages, teachers that are used to that, so they know how to engage them how yeah. to talk to them and what can be the struggle that they have mm -hmm. it is extremely important so yeah yeah and and also the the fact that people are so aware creates also creates this curiosity so I just remember that everyone was so interested in our culture and like for the kids to show off some of their I remember them like doing presentations and wearing like German clothing <laughs> and or the my my uh, my older one was doing a presentation on Cockney rhyming slang, which is a very London specific mm -hmm. language, um, it, it, um, thing of sort of English um, special kind of expressions and things. So no one okay. knew about it really, and she did the presentation with the help of her English granddad who was visiting at the time. And so there was this just people were welcoming different things and different food and traditions and stuff. So that was incredibly helpful because that's not always mm -hmm. the case because very yeah. often it's like people are like no you need to integrate you need to yeah, learn the local it. stuff yeah. and <laughs> so um so that was really really nice and I think that really helped uh, helped us feel very welcome and at home and obviously if uh, the kids are happy then mom's happy and of course. Uh, I made so many international friends there as well that I still have to this day and because we're all in the same boat you know we, we of course Yes. There, and then we will have to go through this oh my god how how do things work how is this done and then someone will be like oh come I've, I've got this international group or you know yes yes so we can help each other we all we are we have exactly. been there already so now we yeah. can help you etc etc I get it yeah, yeah, yeah. okay now that's so that was very different nice. yeah so that was different when we moved to to Texas and I believe mm. now I mean this was we moved in 2016 and um 
I, I think now this is like eight years on it's different it's much more it's much more international now, especially like I mean Houston I think has always been pretty international because it's mm -hmm. got the oil industry and there's lots of expats like proper like expats with a, working for the big companies we mm -hmm. did actually move to, move to Austin um not what we with a company but not an expat it was not an expat contract but it was okay uh, going to, to California was because of the company my husband was working for and then that the, the next moves happened on our own dime mm -hmm. so we we moved there and um and Austin was not so international and the the people were like oh your your accents are weird and not that they were you know not friendly they I mean Texans are very friendly and hospitable mm -hmm. and it's that southern kind of it's they're famous for it and it was they were but they were also kind of like this is strange you know you're different <laughs> and so it it felt different that's why I said I think had we moved to Texas first it would have probably been a different experience mm. a different experience for sure yeah you probably yeah. will will feel more the shock a uh, cultural shock yeah. is, is there it's yeah. definitely there but uh, yeah in and that it, case it took, yeah yeah it took longer to to kind of feel feel settled there but mm. um but I absolutely fell in love with it so that's okay. something and I it, this was me like when we first my husband was like well there's this company in Austin and uh, I'm kind of interested in that job and and I was like no way am I going to move to Texas are you insane <laughs> and yeah six months later I was there and <laughs> so never and say now never I, <laughs> exactly and this is like life is um yeah. you know throws things at you and my my oldest actually still lives in Austin so oh so I get okay. to go all the time and uh, <laughs> and see friends and spend time and from here it's, it's a four-hour flight so it's it's okay yeah. um yeah. yeah I do miss it I do miss it and I never thought I would so yeah well so then, you know that's uh, that's exactly what we are saying uh, since we started this conversation basically you know life is so um uh, unpredictable yeah. things can be completely yes. different and we have an idea then we move to a place and yeah it's it's completely another and then you miss this place and you miss uh, everything you were doing there so yeah oh, but, but it's, it's very nice and I guess also very brave that you two as parents also had the uh, courage to move so much around because even though yeah. again you are still in the U.S. but yeah, it's not that close to each other, the place where you are, no. uh, where you have moved, no. and they are very different in uh, in, uh, in in many aspects. So well I like done. that you're saying <laughs> courage, though, because I don't think, I don't know, sometimes I think it's just, I, t I tend to just be furious and, um, and I kind of get bored easily too. So, <laughs> so well, <laughs> you know, new child, I, I don't shy away from challenges like that, but I don't know. It's sometimes it's it's yeah maybe courage, but also uh, naive being naive about <laughs> things as well. But because, maybe this is this know. is the secret of life, right? Because come on, it's I yeah, I, I, I yeah. really believe that you need to be brave to go through your <laughs> curiosity. So yes. take the compliment, yeah. and <laughs> we're gonna go back to all these uh, aspects of life. But first, I would like to ask you some boring questions about a little bit, um, what is your experience, for example, with visa? And mm -hmm. uh, what about the health system? Because it's always the most complicated thing uh, or, or, or scary thing about uh, America, I believe. But let's go step by step. So yeah. how did it work for you with the yeah, because your husband had a job already so that yes helped, so that makes things a lot easier because mm -hmm. basically at first you have to apply for you your employer has to apply for your visa on your behalf mm -hmm. so if there is the company decides to send you and they there's a good reason why they need to argue the case why can mm -hmm. why does it have to be this person why can't they use an american like a local person say in that company in in, in california so they had to argue the case that they need it needed to be someone from the UK already working at the company and all that. And we we kind of had to leave all that to the company. So they uh, applied for the visa on our behalf. However, so this was an LB1 visa that I think there are like, I don't know how many, I didn't, I didn't research how many visas there are, but ah, there are I believe there are so many that visas. it's impossible to count. <laughs> and so that's they just said this is the one that we're gonna apply for you. And with that, 
type of visa you can once you've lived in the country uh for three years you can apply for the green card mm -hmm. which then guarantees your like permanent residence and yeah. you can live and work uh and then you can that that's a 10-year thing and then you renew that and so again this is something that your company because it's expensive so your company kind of has to sponsor you it's not you can't just apply for the green card oh no um, no in fact you it's, it's, it's these are other again. levels but the, with a with the um a 1b visa you can um you can do that and and we did so we did in 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 fact apply for the green card as soon as we could just to have that added you know security mm -mm. because visas is always a, a thing they can just kind of kick you out of the country if they if they yeah if indeed <laughs> i mean we have so all these a... american movies that we see about people struggling because they don't really have the right to stay yeah. but they are there yeah. and uh, it yeah. is true yeah. i mean it's, it's reality yeah. it's not completely yeah. so fiction. so with the with that visa so the application process is going and then actually we had a hiccup because uh the person at the embassy, we had to go to the to the American embassy in the, in London and mm -hmm. again explain why we wanted to do this and and all that and a highly stressful process because they're very, you know, they, there's not no time for joking or anything. Mm. It's like yeah. Um, and then actually the uh, we the visa got rejected. Ooh, <laughs> and okay. This is like the whole process is already underway and we had like um already packed up and told everyone and then yeah and it got rejected because of a very silly mistake that one of the the case workers made they they got the application the job description and job title and the and the salary mm -hmm. and they put a, a digit or a comma or something in the wrong place so the salary was all of a sudden less then it wasn't matching the job description basically mm -hmm. it was like yeah, okay. what, but you're this kind of and then you earning what how much and so anyway so instead of someone going hang on there's something wrong with that basically that it was just denied yeah and yeah, had just to like start that. the mm. whole thing again so what which is when it's handy when it's a company doing that for you because <sighs> they pay for yeah. it we have, like they have to pay for it all over again yeah that's the so thing then, right because basically all those kind of application yeah. have a cost and they are not cheap uh no. plus there right. is also like a, a, yes. a timing that yeah. is quite long yeah. i believe at least a couple of yeah. months so... and so so it, it exactly so it delayed everything then we had to i think we'd already booked flights and then we had to change the flights again and then it's that time when you you're like you're already halfway there in your mind and then you have to wait and then everyone's like so oh, what's going on what's happening and you're like yeah I don't know anyway it's all went through and also we um with that visa I was able to work because some of those visas when one of the the mm. partners gets the visa it doesn't necessarily mean that the the husband or wife can work as well Yes, and indeed. so I was that's what allowed. I, that's all what I knew. Uh, yeah, it's so there's a, and we made sure that when we uh, talked to the to my husband's company, uh, he was like, I don't want, we want that specific visa because um, he said, I want my wife to be able to work as well. Okay. Although it took another eight months, I think. When we first moved, it took, I had, I wasn't allowed to, to work for eight months uh, until I then had my, like a work permit and then so I had like a, this little card that but it took eight months so I was okay. which was to be honest totally fine because at the beginning especially when you have young kids there is so much to do and I was in in fact I was glad I was relieved I didn't have to worry Walk about straight that. away <laughs> and so I could throw myself into the being at, yeah. making a home and you know dealing with doctors and you mentioned healthcare earlier getting my head around all that and activities and this the American schools are very big on parent input mm. and volunteering and so oh yes something I had never done before I was stayed away <laughs> from it and all of a sudden people were like yeah come and join this and that and I did because it really helps making friends and just of course you need learning. to make your life there so you need to be there and participate and so it was, in this yeah thing. so it was really nice because then I I could just do that without having to worry about job interviews and stuff like that and mm -hmm. then after eight months I had my permit and then I can I could just kind of okay, go back to okay. 
Um, well, things work out the right way for you anyway. But of course, yeah. if you maybe yeah. people that move or want to move are in a different situation, yeah. also yes. in a different economic situation, because maybe they don't yeah. have a partner that is working already. It's then Absolutely. it can be really difficult because eight months is exactly. Not. So you have to be aware of that, and and it's not yeah. as straightforward sometimes. And actually, I I knew people where the the partner was not allowed to work like the entire time. Of sometimes people would be would send employees for like a two year contract or maybe three mm. years or something, and that's a long time for a yeah. for a, a spouse not to be able to my God to work yeah. and contribute, and it's. Uh, and we were we weren't on a big contract so ours was like open-ended so that's yeah. why we said well if you know if it's two years okay maybe I can I can deal with that I can yeah work on other things but if I know it's like open-ended I definitely want to be able to of course uh, to do work. that yeah 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 I know I'm just so. thinking like about all the scenario possible I don't know even like okay in your case you were also busy yeah with your kids and then of course with school yeah. you know I'm making yeah. a living uh yeah. Or, uh, making uh, you, your your life for you, your kids, yes. etc. Yeah. But I also imagine people that maybe don't have kids. So what you do and, if you can no work and, for two yeah, years? Yeah, and I met I met some along the way as well who weren't yeah. able to work, and uh, it, it gets, can uh, yeah. it's really it can really lead to to horrendous like mental health issues. Yeah, and it's just that it's just too much of an imbalance. Yeah, yeah, then, it's uh, it's something to take uh, in consideration, I guess, uh, as a one of the primary thing to take in yeah. consideration when moving to US in yeah. this sense. So yeah, yeah. Okay. and I mean, I also knew people who didn't who kept their like work and work remotely for a European company, for example. Mm-hmm. But then it's yeah. all it's very complicated then in terms of tax because then you mm-hmm. have to make sure it's all um it's all legal and both like the employer knows and you, there's ways of filing your yeah. taxes and and i mean the, the americans have everyone knows this this is also like in the movies everyone's always talking about taxes and when you actually have when you're american you have to pay taxes regardless of where you live in the world mm-hmm. they will you have to always all the yeah. americans have to do at least um you know two tax returns <laughs> wow yeah um, (laughs) so yeah yeah it sounds very scary but do you think that um having been there for 15 years and changing different countries in america do you think that this american dream still exists i mean this is still what because i don't know i grew up you know like in italy but i guess it's a very european thing you know we grew up with these hollywood movies and with this idea that America is the place of the opportunities, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. You know, and some political, some politicians are still talking about it. Some other are a little bit more reasonable yeah. saying, okay, you know, <laughs> maybe there are some things that we can fix. Mm-hmm. But being a European, living there for long, so you also have seen different kind of government passing by oh yes uh, <laughs> and very different oh, yes. among them huh? without yeah. going deep on that yep. but just very different among them yeah. um does it still exist this american dream i would say uh on paper definitely it still exists and there is still it still has that that draw and that appeal like people are still like let's go and make it big in the u.s and um, which definitely was like for the for the last two hundred years, the big you know people from Europe, from poor yeah. backgrounds, be like, let's go and and you know make it make it happen in the US. And I, I want to say to some extent, it still exists here because of the just the mentality of mm. the, this country and this like you, yeah, you can if you pre- prepare to work really really hard, mm-hmm. then the opportunities are there however in reality i think let's say you're you're white and educated your chances mm-hmm. are much much bigger to actually realize that dream than um than when you, you your skin is brown and you might be from a different economic back, background and yeah. so there is a lot of um people don't want to hear it want to see it some politicians don't want to you know but um 
yeah, I this cost of living in this country is so so high mm-hmm. that uh, I know so many people like teachers who work at the weekends, work other jobs at the weekends, for okay. example. Mm-hmm. Um, people are, are very hardworking. I've never seen so many like hardworking people here, and I also know people from not so like say financially affluent backgrounds who mm-hmm. just really put the work in founded a business and are doing amazingly well okay. so it's it, you you can get it all um and I want to say if you're prepared to to work really really hard and you know no no holidays no this or that and you mm-hmm. the opportunities are are great it's easy to found a business for example it's much easier mm. there's much less red tape and, and bureaucracy and stuff like that it's it's much easier to do that but yeah. having said that it's if you if you have or if you have some money or you can you can you're a great salesperson or you can you can get people to sponsor you know sponsor you put money in your business and mm-hmm. then you work really hard but oh god the cost of living is so 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 high yeah yeah I can be uh, prepared for that be prepared so I say yes it kind of does exist because people love it people still love the the story as well Mm -hmm. you know you come and you just have this idea yeah go to the bank get a loan and and found your business and then you just work 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 and then five years later you sell your company and you're a millionaire yeah so it, okay. it happens and that idea is still there and people are very encouraged also to go mm-hmm. for it and to risk mm-hmm. take risks and and all that is very supported so mm-hmm. that that mentality is, is yeah very... oh definitely you had to you had to fit in the mentality otherwise you won't uh, probably yeah. you won't survive yeah. in that yeah. environment but, but if but, you, you uh... know if, you, if you're more like i just want to I want to work and I want to earn a decent salary and but I also want to go on vacation a lot and stuff and work-life balance (laughs) yeah that's a different um yeah different story yeah Yeah, okay so some people it suits some people and and not others and oh no of course of course but I mean this happen everywhere but the point is that be aware that there the opportunities are different and maybe they are more yeah though they are coming at a cost and the cost yeah. is like that maybe your work life balance is not so balanced <laughs> yeah Probably. and so, and yeah. again it's there's a lot of other nuance like i i've, I've mentioned like your whatever ethnic backgrounds and yeah okay and that's a uh, privilege place. and it's uh, well but i mean we know right we read the news uh, yeah. and and we know that is a big issue it's a big issue yeah. everywhere yeah but America, let's say, um, mm-hmm. is very well known for this, mm-hmm. um, yeah, mm-hmm. um, disparity. So yeah. Yeah, 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 unfortunately. But we hope it's gonna change, of course. And um, you have said <laughs> already, you mm-hmm. you 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 met your husband in UK. Your husband is English. How yeah. is being a mixed couple, being in a mixed relationship, in a mixed couple, and living in a yeah. third country? Oh my God, I cannot imagine yeah. it. <laughs> it actually, it was really good for us, I think, for our relationship, because I feel like when I lived in the UK, it was, I was relying a lot on him kind of showing me things and explaining things and I you know it was like his friends I became friends with and so a lot of it was I I learned so much about Mm -hmm. the English and their mentality uh through him and his friends and because that's the best way right so that's the sense of humor and and all of that but it always felt like yeah I was definitely in his country and then we moved to the U.S. and um and it was level we were both on the okay. same we were both like this is new okay. and because the language doesn't really that you know I spoke English well and it, yeah. it, so we were in the same kind of like ah learning about different different ways that things are done and so it was new for him as well so it was kind of nice to to be um to be on the yeah. same or sometimes I you know I understood things before he did and I'm like yeah see <laughs> so it was I know that confidence, okay, cool. confidence boost uh for sure and just fun also to to discover 
because you know when you I had already left my country so I was already aware of big cultural differences and communication styles for example because Mm -hmm. the Brits are very different to the Germans yeah and then so I was kind of like I knew this and I mean he obviously knew as well in theory like Americans have a different way of doing business than the Brits but I think it's still he was surprised more by certain situations I think um, Mm. where I was like I was anticipating things or difficulties or I could see a problem where it took him maybe a bit longer to understand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, <laughs> nice. <interesting>. And <laughs> and what about your kids? How do they feel? I mean, what is for them? So if you ask, like, they feel more English, German, they, yeah, American. They, they, always, <laughs> they always get this question um, as well. And they are lucky enough to, to hold all three passports. So they can just confidently say they feel all three. Yeah. Um, I don't think they feel one more than the other, to be honest. They're very much at home in all the different countries. Um, wow. They're both currently in Germany, actually. And I get pictures of big German breakfast and, <laughs> um, you know, donut kebab and, um, you know, just beautiful old buildings. And they're just yeah. loving it. So um, I, they don't have... They don't have a, oh, I'm American, mm-hmm. but they, it's more like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm from all these different places. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they. Literally a war, a war citizens. <laughs> yeah. I can yes. definitely see some, some like character traits that they, that they have or that, that were they Maybe when they, they meet new people, for example, sometimes mm-hmm. I think you can tell that they were, they were raised in the U.S. because they're, sometimes they appear much more confident like they come you know approaching people and getting you talk having conversations with people especially like you know older people Mm -hmm. they I can see that they there's that confidence and that gets that's something that kids here just are raised with it's like speak up you don't need to be you don't need to shrink into the background you can you know approach someone shake their hand and and look them in the eye and so they they you can be whoever you want basically still that yeah in the mentality yeah. so, so I, you build I, this confidence yeah see that because they, there is a difference um yeah sometimes okay. I can observe so it's kind of it's it's interesting very yeah. interesting maybe next time I want to interview your uh, kids too yeah <laughs> it would be nice I guess they have yeah. so much get the other say, get you know? the other perspective with Absolutely. those 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 experience yeah. of life that you've been through yeah and, and it's, and it's still... interesting because they it wasn't easy for them at all yeah. like moving so much and all that but um my youngest one actually just a couple of weeks ago when I think were we all I think we dropped her off at the airport and um and then she was like I like that I had this I've been exposed to all those different places because I always feel like I go I'm going to a place I know and so I'm I'm really grateful that I had that and we were like oh my god you know after all the (laughs) after all the stress and the I hate moving and yeah. I don't want to be the new person again. And, you know, when you, as a parent, you always think, oh my God, what are we doing to them? Yes, of course. And yeah, so that was nice. So <laughs> now you know that uh, you didn't like, do anything wrong, <laughs> but uh, on the contrary, they are happy. That's, that's nice. Well, yeah, I, you know, it's, 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 I'm sure there are a lot of things that we could have done better along the way and maybe had we you know not done certain moves or something but Mm -hmm. at the end of the day but I mean this uh, this works for all parents right I mean despite the kind of life that that, that you have as a as a daughter or or son every parent can think back and say oh I could have done it differently okay yeah well (laughs) so you did your best I'm sure about it (laughs) you still do so that's enough (laughs) Stephanie (laughs) before we close off uh, I want to go back to your uh, podcast and mm-hmm. uh, let us know a little bit like w- okay you told us how you started it why did you start and what people can get listening to mm-hmm. your podcast and where they can find it of course I'm going to share uh, the link in the description yeah. but um, where they can listen to you and tell us a little bit more about it yeah so it's called transcontinental overload and that's because my blog was called that and it's actually a line from a James Brown song living in America because that's how I 
at first I called that's what I called my blog living in America and then I listened to the lyrics and there was there's a line in there that mentions transcontinental overload and I was like mm -hmm. I love that. sounds catchy and now 15 years later I'm like um maybe that kind of was a self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. <laughs> I chose that because the overload with everything is in, insane um and I started the, the podcast when at a point where I was kind of it wasn't that I was getting bored with writing about my experience because I love writing. And um, so that's something I still do, but I felt like I wanted to share other people's perspectives mm -hmm. and just kind of being in this online international online community, expat community and making connections. I'm like, every people have so many diff different and so many interesting stories to tell. And I really want to share those. And I want to, I, I don't want to just talk about myself. I want other people's um, experiences. And so that's how I started. Yeah. I love having conversations about living uh, abroad and, you know, speaking different languages and all the experiences, you know, cross-cultural relationships, all that. So it's, I love it. And so I love talking to people. And then I thought, why not just talk to people and record it? And then other people can listen and then feel, ah, oh, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Yes. And, <laughs> oh, wow, my experience was exactly the same. Or maybe even, wow, my experience was completely different. And yet it's the same country and so I thought yeah. there's so many people um that's very that's nice really that's yeah. what I wanted to give people a voice and then the people who listen to feel less alone yeah. that's very nice I mean I guess it's a very kind uh goal and uh yeah I agree I agree your podcast is very nice and I'm very happy I have been part of it <laughs> and <laughs> yes, your uh, episode but... came out this week <laughs> <laughs> indeed yeah so, yeah. but yeah, there are so many other stories because I used to listen to it yeah. when I walk sometimes also with my dogs yes. and I, I, I listen a little bit to stories of mm -hmm. other expats and it's, uh, it's and very it was inspiring. A, it's very nice indeed. It's, it's a really, it was a really good experience because I felt, because I, when, whenever I spoke to other people and, and very often when I say, oh, you should talk about your story, you should write about this. People would be like, oh no, my, my story is not interesting or my life is not that interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 you know what? Uh, it, it, that's so wrong. And let's just, let's have a conversation. And then, you know, sometimes, or even sometimes with a, a conversation, I'll be like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe one conversation is really mind blowing to me. And mm -hmm. another one is maybe not as exciting. But at the end of the day, the feedback I get is every listener takes a different thing away from it. So sometimes when I think this is an amazing episode, someone would be like, yeah, that was okay. And sometimes yeah. when I'm, when I feel like, yeah, that was okay. Someone will be like, oh my God, that really touched a nerve. I, when she said this and that. And so I know there is something for everyone mm. in there. Yeah. So, and yeah, that's why definitely. I there is always was, somebody that needs yes, to hear that people also. People so, have yeah. these, these crazy expectations of themselves. And, and I'm like, no, 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 your story is valid. Your story is important to tell because someone out there will be identifying with it or just will need to listen to it. So Indeed. I'm like, I, I, will, I will, anyone who contacts me really and, and <laughs> might want to share this. Story. So like, everybody yeah, that is it. listening uh, has a story of maybe I've, things that doesn't have a story, but just want to share their move yeah. abroad, yeah. please contact Absolutely. Stephanie. And maybe Absolutely. we're going to listen to your story next time uh, uh, in yeah. the podcast. So Stephanie, there are going to be so many other things that we could talk about. Maybe we can record another interview. <laughs> For now, I want to thank you a lot because you gave us a different perspective. We talk about many things uh, in this short time and I really enjoy our conversation. Thank you a lot. Yeah, so did I. And um, yeah, uh, talk to you soon. <laughs> yeah, Bye, thank everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.